This is an interesting little mechanism that I saw online. I've seen a couple different versions. Um, I wanted to try to make my own, so I've made one that's 3D printed parts and laser cut. And the mechanism, this particular one has three arms on the front wheel, and it's it can be found in the book called 507 Mechanical Movements. Um, and in there it's listed as multiple gearing. I couldn't find a better name for it than that. Um, there's a few different variations of it. You can increase the number of of arms on the front wheel and it becomes um, either more or less complicated I guess. The uh, So this one has five arms and this one has two. So I've made the design that I came up with is all designed in open scan and it uh, is parametric and it allows you to change the number of arms so changing between these three models is just changing one number in the open scan model and that's pretty neat and you can actually go higher than five um, as the as the number of arms go up the area in the middle here where there's nothing gets bigger and the the fasteners have to come out but it's all parameterized so you can do that without uh, just dis disrupting the operation of the model so this is all, and this is all shared on Thingiverse. You can download the files; they're free to download. the um, The instructions on how to assemble this thing, it was just complicated enough that I thought it was worth going through um, a little bit of a discussion about that. So, at the end of this video, there's a long, about 15 minutes of assembly for for one of these. Actually, in that, I'm I'm assembling the the two armed version. So, if you want to build one yourself, go to Thingiverse, grab the models, print them out laser cut them and you can follow along with the video to assemble it. Need a little bit of glue. Any kind of glue will work. Uh, like school glue. This is just wood glue. <clears throat> I think it's... So, and I've tried trial fit all these things to make sure they fit together. Sometimes they're, they're a little tight and you might have to adjust a little bit. I sanded a little bit off of this edge to make so this piece fit in there really nice. <clears throat> so you want to do that before you start gluing up, make sure everything fits together. But this, after I have trial fit it all together, I'll show you how it goes together and the way I glue things. <clears throat> so basically I take a toothpick and all of the inside corners are going to apply a little bit of glue. And for this particular model, you want to make sure that you get <clears throat> these four pieces put together first because <clears throat> that all needs to slide in all at one time into here. Get a little bit started. <clears throat> and this is the optional piece and what this is, it's just to make sure everything kind of goes together straight. It'll slide in. These are the 3D printed parts. A few of these parts are ready to go straight out of the printer. These parts, these little guys, so what I did is I printed these with a with a brim so they're all attached to each other and what that does is it allows the printer to print these and it prevents the, um, the small parts from separating from the printing bed. So what has to happen with these is they have to be peeled away into individual parts and then cleaned up. So peeling them away is pretty easy. Uh, the There's inevitably going to be some little pieces left on on the edges that we'll have to come back and trim off and I'm not going to do that on the video but you kind of get the idea. There's just little bits and pieces. If you have a 3D printer that you trust to not have those parts um, disconnect from the print bed, 
that's fine. And these, I'm not going to tap these, so there, there's going to be a screw that screws into this part. And I sized it so that the little M3 screw will just kind of make its own threads in there. And that's a pretty small part. I don't have any thread taps quite that small. Now these parts, these are a little bit bigger. And I've always found it's just best to design the part so that it's uh, the diameter is prepared to be tapped. Um, so then what I'm going to use for these two parts to make the, the threads inside there is a, a little uh, tap. And it's a 1024 screw thread. And I have an old chuck out of a drill that I, when I was throwing away the drill, I keep the chucks and make little uh, tapping handles for them. And that way I can take and put this right in here. And because this is plastic and it's pretty easy, we don't have to worry about... Um, any any kind of tapping fluid or anything like that. You just want to make sure that when you when you're doing it, you go in um, and then back out occasionally to uh, clear the clear the chips out of there. So that part will be tapped when I get this all unscrewed. And that uh, screw will go in there really nice. So then we, I'll do the same thing to this one. These are the parts for the small wheel. This version is going to have two arms on it with two bearings. And the screw and the fixture for that. As I mentioned before, there's a slightly dif different color. So then I'm going to say this is my front, which is the lighter color. The way this goes together is... The small bearing, the screw goes through that, and then that's going to go through the cone shaped piece here. Basically, that lets that so the, the inner race is being held by the by the inside of that screw. It's kind of an odd use of a flathead screw, but it works. And then the, the cone shape on this side makes sure that the only the inside race is being contacted there. And then that gets put into the into one of the arms. I guess we can put the put the little kind of nut. Oops, and I put it on the wrong way. I talked about it, but I put it on the wrong way. So the nut goes on the front. Kind of, it's not really a nut. It's just it has a it has a nut, the hexagon shape, just in case you need to hold it when you're screwing into it. So that isn't. I didn't tap that part, but it's just about right. So it'll you can just grab, and that that little screw doesn't need a lot of uh, strength to hold it in place. So that spins nice. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Make sure it spins okay. Yep. Yeah. So that's that piece almost assembled. The next thing we need to do is take the larger bearing, and this is the part with a small recess in here for that bearing to pop into. So we're gonna make sure that bearing fits. So that snaps in, and that's going to be we're going to have the, so this is the thicker part with the, with the counter bore. It's going to be on the front. So we line up the holes. Get that so the bearings in there. So now the, we can finish this off by putting some of these small screws. Hold that and notice the, the wood piece here has five holes in it, and, or sorry, the 
the piece I'm screwing into now has five holes, but the wood has ten holes. What what's going to happen is we're going to put in five screws on this side, and then five screws in the other side. You just have to make sure that when you put the screws in on the other side, that you use the holes that we don't have a screw coming in from this side. So that's because it's laser cut, the holes have to go all the way through, but you just have to be conscious of where which one of those we went in. And once you get one started, you will be all set. So you see that one lines up with that hole. So I'm going to go the hole right here. I'm not going to put that one in completely yet. Just getting started. Go around and make sure they're all tight. You don't have to be very snug. Just, just, just tight. Just tight enough so that they hold it in place. There's not really a lot of load on any of these parts. It's kind of. These are the parts for the large wheel. Uh, we have the the front, and then there's the the back, and then basically we're just going to put screws in here to. connect these two boards together and one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put um, screws into the back here and they're going to be sticking out the front just a little bit so that when we uh, put it on there it'll it'll find its home a little bit better Uh, and you can see the holes are ready for them to come in so let's let it slide on there and it'll find its home now you know when when you screw the rest of them in when you screw them in the rest of the way they'll all be in good position these screws are really kind of serving two purposes they're holding the, the boards together but they're also aligning everything really well. These, especially this inner ring of screws is critical for getting the um, the channels on the front in the in the correct location. My first one I made, I didn't have the um, screws in there, and I just glued it, and it, it was all kitty wampus. So here is the next piece. We're just going to line up the four holes on the outer ring. All right, and then now this is actually the same piece as we have on the on the small wheel. We're gonna pop that bearing in there again. Make sure it's in there nice and tight. So as we're putting this in, we just make sure those holes are all gonna line up. It's a difficult to see, but they're there. And then these. Little screws just hold that in place. Okay, so that's that's that piece. So now we're ready to start assembling the rest of this. So we have the the brace. The front wheel is going to go on first. What we're going to do is stick the one of the bearing holders in the front. And that'll be held on by these screws. So the next thing we need to do is grab this guy's gonna go in here like this. So we need a, a small cap that'll fit the screw on that side. And that screw is gonna go right through there and then go into the into this guy here. So that's what this hole on the back here is for. So we're gonna If I can show this well, so there's a there's a hole. And through that hole, just stick the screwdriver, and that's where the 
that screw is going to hold the front wheel onto the onto the stand. So now mounting the big wheel to the to the stand, we're going to um, use the same parts, similar parts as the small wheel. Now this this time we have a small shim that I'm going to place. On this piece and that's what that's going to do is it's going to shift the position of the big wheel in and out so it'll this with it in there it's going to move it a little bit back which could put it a little farther away from the small wheel so that's going to allow that shim allows you to add more shims or take out a shim so if, you, if the wheels are too far apart you can take out a shim it'll bring it closer together if they're too close together you can add a shim and move it a little farther apart so that's going to be we're going to keep that shim on that part and that's going to go in here we're going to stage that kind of like that. Um, then we're going to need the screw in the larger wheel. And we have a, a small bushing spacer that goes inside here. And the screw goes through that. So now we have that ready. And that's going to, so we, the, the two wheels are relatively close together. So to get them to, get them to go together, we have to I'm going to slide this piece in and let the screw not be in there and then kind of line everything up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to turn, I'm going to hold the screw on the back with my, or on the front of the wheel with my finger and turn the, turn the 3D printed part until we get a little, get it started. So now, now it's started. I'm going to hold that in place. And I have the screw there. So now I can do the opposite. I'm holding the back piece in, in place and tighten this screw down. So this is the easiest way to do this is to get that screw tight first. And you can see we, we're going to want to make sure that our um, bearings are lined up. Now that's that's snugged up. So now when we flip over, we're going to need to line up the holes so that I can get these screws in. We get, get one started here to, and then we just need to place the rest of them in there. Oops. Make sure we're still lined on the front. And there we go. That's how you assemble the wheel.